Slow Knitters. This is episode 18 of the Slow Knitter podcast. Um, welcome. We're back from um, the beach. We're back home in Atlanta. And um, yeah, this has not been a good, well, it hasn't been a bad week. It's been an eventful week here at the Slow Knitter Evacuation and Knitting Center. Yes, I was in Evacuation Center for four days for my great nephew Brendan and his girlfriend Naomi. I got a call Wednesday night from my niece Mary Beth who said, you know Brendan lives in Miami now. I said, yes, I know that. She said, well he needs to get the hell out of there. Excuse my French. He needs to get out of there and can he come and stay with you guys in Atlanta for a few days while this hurricane blows through Miami? Uh, well, yes! Come. Yeah, absolutely. So, Brendan left Miami Thursday morning. Made it to the border of Georgia and Florida Thursday night about 3 in the morning. Because there was so much traffic. People escaping Florida. All, all over Florida. Not just South Florida, but Central Florida on up. And he, they made it here... Friday about 1.30, exhausted, because they got like three hours sleep, driving, 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 and um, Brendan wanted to do all the driving, Naomi offered, but he didn't want her to drive, so he drove there. Now, just FYI, they're 26 years old. I have millennials in my house. I have no children, so I'm not used to having millennials in my house. It was a blast, I have to tell you. It was a lot of fun. Um, it just cracked me up. Brendan was like sitting watching South Park all the time. <laughs> and Netflix. And it was good because we weren't in each other's hair. You know, I gave them um, directions and information on to go to sort of a hip walking millennial kind of area in our, in our city called Beltline where you can walk on old railroad tracks. And, you know, they've paved it. It's very artsy. And then there's a huge old reclaimed building that they've really dressed up with restaurants and all kinds of um, good stuff for aimed specifically at that millennial crowd and um, so it's sort of an emerging area of town anyway they went to Pont City Market they walked the Beltline they came back they were tired um, we cooked you know, it was just fun. I mean, we just had a lot of fun. But by Tuesday, they were dying to go home. Of course, Sunday, when news of the hurricane now taking a westward turn, going up the west coast of Florida, in coming into Atlanta. So they escaped Miami to come to the storm here. Poor things. We lost power for about... 24 hours. So Monday afternoon, yeah, we always do because we live in a forest. Atlanta, if you haven't been to Atlanta, it's a forest. It's very, very hilly. It's very, very tree heavy. It's beautiful when there's no storm. When there's a storm, it's not so beautiful. Um, oh my God, trees down on power lines. You can guarantee you will lose power. And sure enough, we lost power Monday at about to 2 30 p.m. and it didn't come on until Tuesday at 1 30. So 23, 24 hours. We're used to it. We've lived through this before but it was really funny. Remember I told you that we had women that came in and packed our house up? Well they packed all the candlesticks, all the candlestick holders. It was hysterical. I wish I took a picture of the conglomeration of lighting that we tried to have. Flashlights, lanterns, candles sort of, water bottles fashioned into candlestick holders. It was funny. We had no games to play because they packed everything up. We didn't have a deck of cards. How stupid is that? Don't ever pack up your cards. Anyway, so Brendan got ESPN on Aunt Rena's little iPad and watched football games Monday night, so he was happy. <laughs> but they could not wait to get out of here on Tuesday. And I don't blame them. So they took off on Tuesday. And I, I texted them later Tuesday 
early evening and I said, I hope you're going okay. Where are you? She said, we're, you know, it's a lot of traffic, but we're moving and we, oh, we both have to go to work tomorrow. So I don't know what time they made it back to Miami. I know they made it back. Um, but I, so it was, it was an adventure and I was knitting the whole time because you know, what else are you going to do? Um, but you know, I went to, I was out all day Saturday and they went to, where'd they go? Pond City Market on Saturday. I was out with my knitting girls on Saturday. Bob went to a Braves game, baseball game on Sunday. So we weren't in each other's hair, which is really good. But Bob said at the baseball game, they could have come because if you were an evacuee from Florida, they let you in for free at the baseball game. Why didn't they announce that? Because the kids could have gone to the baseball game. This is me, the kids. <laughs> It's great getting to know Brendan a little bit more because we don't live. You know, he grew up in New York in Westchester County, and we didn't. We don't live there. We didn't live there. We didn't, we don't only see him on special occasions, but it was really great getting to know him. So, and they love my socks. It got really cold here on Monday when you're in the house and it's like 58 degrees outside because it really cooled out, and there's no heat or there's no. So everybody got so she wore my shawls and they wore my socks and. And they went home with them, which was great. which was very flattering. Uh, I would show you an FO of a sock, but it's now in Brendan's possession. I have a picture. I'll show it to you. I think it's the beginning of the thing. So anyway, so very eventful. But Teresa, Michelle, and I finally made it to Eat, Sleep, Knit, which is now in a new warehouse, new facility out in Dallas, Georgia, which is pretty far for me. I mean, it's about 45 minutes. It's, uh, it used to be 10 minutes away. Now it's 45, maybe 50 minutes away. But it's just fantastic. I mean, it's like, uh, anybody who wants to come to Atlanta, come stay with me, because I've already set up for that. I know how to do that now. And we'll go out to Eat, Sleep, Knit. It's an hour there, an hour back. But who cares? You'll get great yarn. Uh, anyway, yeah, so we never, I never made it to the Fiber Festival. I wanted to go to the Georgia Fiber Festival. That was a plan. That's why we came home early from the beach because we didn't want to go to the Fiber Festival, which I never made it because it's on the way to Atlanta from Florida, about an hour and a half south of here. It would be, it would have been full of traffic. It would have been hard to get gas. Uh, no. So we met for breakfast before and we decided as a group that we weren't going to go, that we were going to go to eat, sleep, knit instead. So there were only, there was supposed to be something like eight or nine podcasters there and only two of them showed up. And SSK Yarners, Sharon and Karen were there. I think they went the day before for some classes and they decided to leave early because of all this like, oh, it's going to be a lot of traffic and there's not going to be a lot of gas. So, and Jade from So Perfect Pearl, she made it down there. She said, screw it, I'm just going to try to go. And she did. And she made it. Um, and she's, so go to her YouTube channel, So Perfect Pearls, and you can see a vlog of her visit to the Georgia Fiber Festival. Unfortunately, a lot of vendors didn't show up because of uh, where it was located, sort of right on the route from Florida to Georgia. Um, scared of the store? I don't know. But it was not a great showing, so I hear. But I would have loved to have gone anyway because I saw what Jade got and I'm super jealous. But I don't need any more yarn. I really don't. Because I'm going to show you my acquisitions. I'm a little embarrassed. Because these are acquisitions I made before I went to the beach and I didn't show them to you. So this is an acquisition heavy podcast. Anyway, it was, it was, uh, it was a shame we didn't get to go. Now we're trying to figure out if we're actually going to go to the Southeast Fiber Festival in Asheville, North Carolina. It's more of a hike. I mean, it's not a day trip. It's an overnight trip. So we're, we're thinking about it. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, I'll get back to you on that. Um, so that was, and I was knitting the whole time they were here, or attempting to knit, and showing them my knitting treasure. Boy, Naomi was just like, okay. That's nice. <laughs> she didn't care. Knitting isn't her thing. She's cooking is. She's a good cook, man. Holy crap. And you know one of these intuitive cooks that cooks like, oh, a little this, a little that, like doesn't follow a recipe, comes up with these like 
fantastic meals. Like what? God, me, I have to follow a recipe. Okay, anyway, enough of that. Moving on. Um, given the fact that there have been just hurricanes and awful things happening, um, Hurricane Harvey in Houston broke my heart in two. Irma broke my heart in two. It just, the devastation and the hopelessness you feel when everything you have is gone or it's flooded or pets are lost or it's uh, people dying. It just kills me. It just, it was just overwhelming for me. I was so thankful to the people in our community who have stepped up and who's going to, who are going to donate proceeds of the sales of some of their yarns, um, or their yarn, um, such as, uh, Lauren and Trey from Lolo did it. If you bought one of her skeins, she's going to donate the entire proceeds to uh, Hurricane Harvey Relief. And then um, also uh, Karen, from who is knit to pearl to on Instagram and is the dyer behind Cordabella Yarns, also did the same thing. So I, um, first of all, I donated to every kind of pet cause I could donate to. Okay? I just did. And I donated, and I bought their yarns. I bought Lauren's yarn, Lauren and Trey's yarn from Lola Did It. I bought some Cordobella yarn from Karen. And then Ann Bud sent a note out last night, I think, or maybe the day before, that said, um, if you buy one of her patterns, she's going to discount to 25% or something like that. Don't quote me. Um, and then she's going to take the proceeds from all of it. I mean, she's not going to keep any of it. The cost of the pattern, the 25 nothing. She's going to donate it to Hurricane Relief. A Red Cross, which is really, really pretty great. So this community really comes together under times of stress like this. And um, I hope that all um, fellow crafters and makers that are uh, that have been affected by Harvey or Irma uh, have made it through okay. And um, if they need anything, I know they can reach out to this really giving, wonderful community. Anyway, this really sort of preoccupied me a lot. Can you blame any of us who are preoccupied with that? Anyway, change of topic now. Let's talk about knitting. Okay. Um, oh, by the way, our house, which is our beach house, which is in the Florida Panhandle, right, real, way west, was not really affected by this storm. So it seemed to go up central Florida all the way up. Um, oh, so our house is in the Panhandle. Neighbors told me, and my friend Martha told me that uh, they got some wind and some rain, and that was it. So we, we're very blessed and we're lucky that uh, we weren't affected. God. Anyway, um, speaking of Martha, Martha, my new dear friend who lives near me in the beach, I told you a little bit about her. We knit together and um, we met twice while I was down there. And when I get back, we're going to meet again. We're going to knit together again. And she's been a real help to me because I was stumped on something. And I was like texting her. It's like, why don't I do this? And so she said, you know, do this instead of that. She's a really good knitter. And so it was really helpful. So she's a sweetheart. I love her. Hi, Martha. Um, I can't wait to see her again when I go back to the beach next month. Um, oh, I want to tell you something else. My friend Carol, the fast knitter, who I told you about, she is sock. She's really into socks this year, and all of her socks have red toes. No matter what she's knitting, she has red toes or socks. So she is knitting a pair of socks, and she's naming them Irma. <laughs> uh, okay, enough of that hurricane stuff. Anyway, um, let me tell you what I've got going on in the knitting world. Okay, first off, I thought I would update you on something. I know I've showed you this, but you know how much I love it. And this is my um, Vila shawl from Helen Stewart Shawl Society. Well, I I added the um, Sheila Pinkston's yarn in the lace section. It's so pretty. I love this lace section. Can you see it? Oh my God. And I added a stripe of this color midway, even though it's not in the pattern, I saw it on Ravelry, but midway in, I added a stripe. But this yarn, first of all, it's gorgeous. The lace section is beautiful. 
I love it. I love the combination. I have a lot more to go. As you know, I did um, post on the Ravelry group for this shawl that I wanted to make it a little smaller. So um, the moderator wasn't Helen. It was one of her people. Said, just make sure that you complete a lace section. Don't, you know, re reduce it by one lace section. One, And I keep adding... Um, lifelines in the lace section because I'm renowned for screwing up lace sections and I'm not going all the way back. I'm not. I'm not. So I just, you know, at the beginning of each lace section, I put in a lifeline just to protect myself from myself. Anyway, pretty. Love it. Love it. I'll just keep showing it to you because I just love it so much. So this is going to be big. It's going to be long. It's so fun. I think I have four more of these lace sections. I've already done two. I think I have four more before I go back to the chevron um, gray and uh, off-white. That's fun. Okay, kids. I joined the Hohe Fall 2017 Knit Along. We have to pick two projects of Hohe's, of any of her patterns, and it's a September 1 through December 31 uh, knit along. Now, we know that I'm not going to finish it, but I decided I would join. All right. So, you know I've never knit a sweater, or it's been a very long time since I've knit a sweater. And I wanted to knit something that was going to be relatively straightforward and easy. Well, easy, you know simpler-ish for me. So I, I had this really beautiful um, Madeline Tosh DK in the Tarte colorway. And it is pretty beautiful. I mean, it is... This is it. I mean, you can see it's a little bit of a halo here, but you can see how beautiful it is. It's got... It's sort of a I don't want to say it's red, but it's got some black in it, black undertones. It really is beautiful. It's been a long time since I knit with DK because I usually do fingering, and it's thicker. Um, but I don't mind it. I, I kind of like it. Anyway, I it starts from the ribbing, the oak down, right? I think I had to restart it four times. <laughs> well, it's new to me. Well, I finally listened to my inside voice that said, put a freaking lifeline in, woman, and then you won't have to rip it all the way back. If you rip it back, you rip back to the ribbing. So I did that. So, I made it through the short rows and this is the beginning of my basic raglan sweater. Ooh, it's really blown out this color right here. I don't know why. But I made it through the ribbing. You see my lifeline in on the ribbing? So the ribbing, and I made it through the short rows. And the, I really could not, I kept screwing up the wrap and turns. I know, I know. You're all sitting there going, what? It's so easy. No, not for me. And finally, Martha texted me, how's it going? I went, I guess short rows are killing me. I don't get it. She goes, why aren't you using German short rows? They're so easy. I'm like, oh, I think I know how to do German short rows. So she recommended I do German short rows. And on the Ravelry group, I mentioned that I was having trouble with the short rows and would German short rows be something? Has anybody substituted wrap and turns for German short rows? <laughs> and how he answered back, I'm not that familiar with German short rows. I don't know. So I tried it though. And Martha gave me advice on put stitch markers in wherever you make a short row, wherever you make that wrap and that turn and work instead of wrap and turn. German short rows are turn and work. Uh, and I did, and they were re I was really successful with them, and I love them. I do. Anyway, so this is only the... <laughs> I have to, like, continue this. Knit one round, then all sorts of increases, like, 
13 more times. I like working with this 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 uh, yarn. This metal attached to decay, it's really blown out. It's not that bright. You're seeing very bright color, but it's it's more muted. But um yeah, I'm liking it. Um it's super for me. Um and I hope to finish it by the end of the year. <laughs> but you know, maybe. Be positive. I'm being positive. Maybe. But isn't this gorgeous? Yeah, it's pretty special. So anyway, um, uh, Carol is a, an experienced sweater knitter, so she's going to help me with this once I get to the sleeves and I have to put them on hold because I'm going to... The second project I'm working on oh, uh, is the bobble cowl. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not even going to show you. I am doing it in a beautiful Madeline Tosh twist light liquid gold. It's gorgeous. All right, now you're going to force me to get it. All right, hold on. It's gorgeous. I mean, the, the colorway, the yarn. I really am digging this twist light. Oh, like, I want to make, make everything in twist light. But this is the beginning of it. It's a pro provisional cast on. That in and of itself was fun. <laughs> no. It's a provisional cast on. And you see these, all these little light bulb stitch markers? That's where the German short rows were. I also made bobbles. There's bobbles. I never made a bobble. I kind of don't mind making bobbles. Anyway. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, I don't understand some of the directions. So, I'm, you know, I've decided I'm just going to power through and see what happens. Worse comes to worse. I have to rip it out. I'm not that far gone. But this yarn is like magnifique. This is uh, Madeline Tosh. Well, let me get it. Madeline Tosh Twist Light in the Liquid Gold Colorway. Oh, it is gorgeous. It's so goldy. Um, and the pattern is, uh, hmm. I really like the pattern, and I've seen some Epos on Ravelry, but I have to say, here's the pattern. Isn't it pretty? Uh, we'll see. I mean, it might be fine. So, I'm sort of obsessed with that right now. Um, and I'm continuing on with um, the uh, Tanya. Tanya? Yeah. No. No. Yeah. This shawl, it's not Tanya. Raina. Like Rena, Rena shawl, where I'm using that for pats and wool mys that looks like it's an Outlander kilt. Aren't you glad it's back? Did you see the first episode? <laughs> right. Anyway, I go on about that. Anyway, this is a really delightful, relaxing knit, and I think I actually might finish it in time for holiday. Hopefully. Hello again, gadgets. I'm a little bit of a gadgets freak. I'm a little bit of a, I like toys. All right, so the first thing I saw, because I'm making this sweater, and I'm 99.9% .9 sure that I had cheap gauge. I thought I had to go down a needle size, but that was not right. So I went back to the original gauge swatch that I made and maybe I told myself that it was right. I think it was right. But you know what's going to tell me it's right? This thing called a, a swatch gauge. I guess I should take it out. Oh yeah. You actually lay this on your swatch. And it tells you exactly what you need to know. It's called a swatch gauge. 
You may have seen this. You lay this, it's got these like feet you put in your swatch and then you can measure this way and this way to see if you've got engaged. It's made by Acre Works, A-K-E-R Works. I will put the link in the um, in my show notes, and my show notes are always in my Ravelry podcast group. Um, so I'm going to, I haven't yet, but I'm going to see if I've actually achieved gauge on that sweater. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm close. Pretty, yeah. Acre Works, gauge swatch. Then, <laughs> I'm so funny. I don't know, I think I saw this on Facebook. I'm not gonna, can you see? Like if you're in a, in a chair and you, you need more light, you just put this around your neck. I think this is so cool. So I use this during our blackout. <laughs> I, <laughs> that was one of our lighting instruments was Rena's uh, neck thing. Yeah, and it's flexible so you can, if arms are flexible. This is very cool. I don't know. It's pretty good, actually. Um, I've used it. Because my TV chair doesn't really get a lot of direct light from the lamp. I need something like right over me. <laughs> so I don't know if I'm ever really going to use it. I have used it. It's actually pretty handy. I will say that. And then I think one of the podcasts at the beach, I told you about this. Um, the knit kit thing where it's got all sorts of fun little gadgets in it when you're traveling. Like measuring tape. Uh, like a little yarn cutter. And apparently CSA approved. So this is called a knit kit. So I think um, I saw a podcast where <laughs> it was a crochet hook that fits inside. Uh, I think I saw a podcast where um, Dr. Kelly, Christine Kelly from uh, U University, also talked about it. It's got little scissors in it. It's got little needle caps and little stitch markers. It's pretty handy. And needle, you know, yarn, a darning needle. Knit crate. TSA approved, I think. I don't know, I've never tried going through TSA with it yet. Um, okay, so that's the gadget section. Let's move on to acquisitions, yarny acquisitions. I have to show you this. This is the coolest thing. My friend Carol, who I talk about all the time, um, visited some family in Washington State uh, in the, at the islands off Seattle. She stopped in this knitting store and they sold um, it's called Fidalgo Artisan Yarn Company. Here we go. Fidalgo Artisan Yarn Company. That's her card. They make um, a yarn that has copper that runs through it. This is the In the Rainforest colorway. First of all, it, the color, when I was winding it, you see all this like yellow and blues in it. You can't really see it here, but this is Fidalgo Yarn Company. It's got copper running through it. This is, I got, she got me two, um, 50, uh, 50 gram balls, uh, skeins, which I wound. Uh, and it is super wash merino and nylon. And each one of these 50 gram skeins is about 218 yards. And a small amount of copper is embedded into this yarn, into this yarn's filament. Uh, let, me see, let me read this. A small amount of copper is embedded into this yarn's filament nylon as antibacterial. 
hand dyed yarns have beautiful color variations. Each skein is different and cannot be reproduced. It is different. I mean, when I was winding it, I could see the there was yellows in it and blues in it. I cannot wait to knit this. Plus, it's not doesn't have that soft when it's wound up. But Carol's actually made socks out of them with her red toes. Um, and she says it's really got nice hands. So I'm really looking forward to knitting this up. So Fidelgo Yarn Company out of Anna Court, Anna Courts, Washington State. Yeah, look them up. It's very, very neat. I, I was like thrilled when she gave it to me. Plus I love this color, so um, it's great. They are, oh, they're online too. Tells you about how to find them online. And I'll also put a link um, to them in the uh, show notes. That was exciting. I was excited when she told me she, I do something. I was like, what? Ah, let me guess. Yarn. Um, I, I, I have a lot of acquisitions, but I'll, I'm going to focus on just a few of them because they're new to me and I imagine maybe new to you. I don't know. Um, this is Eat, Knit, Die. That's a card. And this is a, um, it's so pretty. And I saw it online and I was like, oh, that's so cool. It's self-striping and it comes in one of these, um, I don't know, there might be a name for it, but I don't know it. So somebody tell me if there's a name for it, uh, where it comes in a ball instead of a skein. And it has a little um, mini skein of complimentary yarn that matches. It's really nice. If I can undo it, I will show it to you. Um, hmm. Probably should have undone this before the podcast. Okay. Yeah, her, her card is tied to the to the thingy. Yeah, there you go. Okay. I'll get it open eventually. Listen, this is what it looks like. <laughs> I can't help it. Oh, it's tied up. That's why. Um, so it, it's, uh, it's very spring-like. So I don't know if I'll knit it now or I'll wait till next spring to knit it. But um, it's a self-striping ball um, of yarn. Isn't this fun? And has this complimentary for heel cuff and toes. So it's a, you know it's a hundred gram skein, and it's from Nashville. Eat knit dye, um, colorful self striping fun, and it's uh, out of Nashville. Isn't that cool? Yeah, I was excited about it when I got it. Well, when I think I I, I can't remember where I saw it, and it's a four stripe repeat. Six to seven rows in sky blue, four to five rows in pink, six to seven in lilac, and four to five in pink again. So it's got 463 yards, 100 grams. Fun! And it's very nice packaging if you can get it open. But yeah, nice packaging. So eat, knit, die. And then I've been sort of, I think the last time I talked to you, I had ordered something from Barnyard and I was waiting for it to come. It did come. Um, the beach, which I was excited about, but this was after I podcast. And this is from the Barnyard, and I, um, first of all, Kim's work is stunning. And this is um, the Stone Harbor colorway. Oh, beautiful. It really is, like, magnificent. I don't, sometimes I think I want to do it by itself, sometimes I want to do it with, like, a pop of color would really be beautiful with this um, and it's uh, superwash 75% superwash merino 25% nylon sock weight it's called stone harbor so 
So I highly recommend Kim's yarns because they are pretty spectacular. And I was going to use a gray for the next Helen Stewart's shawl. I might use this one. I don't know. Uh, it's pretty lovely. And she sent a really cute um, Progress Keeper stitch marker with it that says something like that. Oh, it's a stitch marker that says, I love knitting. And she's right, because I do. Mm. You can't even see it. There we go. There you go. I love knitting. Thank you, Kim. Love it. Yeah, I, I really do love her work. So, um, yeah. So that's Barnyard Knits. Barnyard Knits hand dyed yarn. I don't actually know where she's out of. I think I'm going to say she's out of. I'm not going to say because I don't really know. I don't really know. Uh, <laughs> what? I ordered this two weeks before we left for the beach. Never got it. But, okay. When I get home, I'll get it. Still don't get it. So I sent a note. And this is um, mustache yarn, which I made a pair of socks out of before. And I love working with it. And Stacy for Mustache Sheep is, I think, the name for a company. I sent her a note and I said, I never got it. I did you, when did you send it? You said you sent it and I never got it. And she's like, well, here's the tracking number. And the only way that I could do it was if I filed a claim with the U.S. Post Office. I was like, okay, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Bam, the next day it came. And I told Stacy, I said, I got it, I got it. The reason I ordered this was because she did a line of self, she does self striping, gorgeous self striping yarn. And she did a Beatles colorway. I grew up on the Beatles from the very start to the very end of them. I have every Beatles song memorized in my head. I love the Beatles. So this is, um, this is actually from my favorite album of the Beatles, which is Sgt. Pepper's. I love Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Heart Club Band. I love it. And I love Help. I also love Help. I really think she's captured Sergeant Peppers, beautifully. And this, these come in 250 gram skeins, you know, and, you know, put together like this. And her yarn is yummy, yummy to knit with. So uh, if you haven't tried anything from Mustache Sheep, Sergeant Score is the name of this particular one. It's 75 Superwash Merino, 25% nylon. Uh, it's really and you have the cover of the album there do you remember that do you remember that album you have the cover of it right there with this yarn tell me that's not perfect and you know what she's so sweet hi Stacy I hope you enjoy this this is what last time I did it with Stacy's yarn I did alternating heels and cuff I think I do the same thing because I just love her yarn. Um, I won't bore you too much more. I wanted to try um, Macmillan Fiber Company. I saw, I kept seeing it and seeing it on Instagram and finally broke down because this color just spoke to me. It's called Spice Market. Spice Market. Look at these colors. And it's 100% superwash merino. No, it's an MCN. Merino cashmere nylon. And this colorway is called Spice Market. And it's 80% um, superwash, 10% cashmere, and 10% nylon. I don't know. I don't, I don't think socks. This this is like a shawl. Like a really... It's pumpkin-y, don't you think? It's sort of fallish. So I really, really love it. So... I was really anxious to get it, and I think Sandy from from um, Fiber. Oh no, <laughs> Sandy. Who am I thinking of? Kate from McMullen Fiber Company um, sent me this, and 
with a little hand knit if you want to give a gift that's hand knit you can stick a tag on it like this she gave me a, a couple of them and the name of the company is McMullen Fiber Company it's really pretty special the hand feel on this is like amazing there you go it's really look at the color oh my god look at the color it's so yum all right and then I went a little wool and boon crazy because I love Sonia's yarns and wait I'm working with one on my um, starting point shawl which will get finished one day I'm mean, making progress I made a lot of progress when I was down at the beach with it um, but I ordered I want to work more in DK I would like to make a sweater out of Sonia's yarn in DK and it's really interesting because this DK has an entirely different feel from the Madeline Tosh DK that I'm working on on that sweater this is her peach perfect in Boone DK. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I thought, you know what? I could see this in a sweater cardigan. Maybe a, I don't know, but it, to me, it's a sweater. And then I saw this in her DK mix, which is called Copper. Boon. Oh my. Lucky. Don't they go together? Maybe something that has a trim in this. I have no idea. But, uh, like the order got a little mixed up. It's like, Sonia, I ordered four of these. I only got two. She's like, oh. Um, I'll put you on the top of my list. It's, don't worry. I'm not doing anything right now with it. She's so great. Anyway, so I'm okay, getting one more copper bottom, copper boon, two more peach perfect in DK. I have no idea what I'm making. I'm looking for the perfect sweater. So if you guys, for a beginner, have an idea of a great sweater, do let me know. That would be great. That would be very great. I don't want to show you anything else because it's a little obnoxious. I, I have a lot more, but um, I'll save it. I did buy um, another twist light, Malintosh twist light, which I just love. I, did, I can't even say enough about it. Um, I love it. A couple more. I'll end with um, a couple books that I got. Um, on the recommendation of Martha at the beach, I got this, which is up, down, all around, Stitch Dictionary by Wendy Bernard. Oh my God, you have to get this book. You have to get this book. I mean, it just gives you a whole bunch of different stitches or different swatches that you can make in the round or flat. There's some patterns in here. It's a pretty recent book. I think it was published maybe a year ago, a couple of years ago, but each well, it will have a, a swatch, the title of it, and then how to do it in the flat and in the round. So if you're just looking for ideas for different patterns, you don't want to do a plain vanilla sock, you want to do something a little bit different, she has edging, different edgings. It's a pretty good look. I strongly recommend that you get this book because it's just great to have in your library and some of the patterns that she has in it are really nice and contemporary I mean they're not sort of a ladyish um, they're nice and contemporary I think one of my favorite it tells you how to design and uh, it, it's really ew. thank you Martha for turning me on to this because <laughs> I could. And Martha says, sometimes it takes to bed and read it. <laughs> and you could easily. So I'll put a link in the show notes 
for this book because this is a really this is a fine man this is a great book so good book good resource there's lots of uh, definitions of of um different you know when you have a stitch definition like what is that uh, go to that book and then i'm a big clara parks fan i think i own most of her books and i i think i bought her craftsy class on stash i've only watched a little of it i haven't watched a lot of it yet but um, she just came out with a new book which i pre-ordered called a stash of one's own by clara parks and it's a compilation from people that are well known in our, in our uh, community in the fiber arts. Uh, Ami from La Bien Ami writes a little, everybody writes a little sort of a short story about their stash. And um, it, it's really a sweet, sweet book. A stash of one's own. So, you know, if you just need a break and want a little reading, like we don't do enough, A Stash of One's Own by Clara Parks. I really, really recommend it. I was just paging through it and, you know, it's just how people in our community deal with their stash. There's a lot of it. Fear not, work in progress, all the stuff we talk about. Knitting my mother's stash. You know, it's just... It's cool. It's really cool. So, for your reading pleasure, I think that's it. Thanks for stopping by the Hurricane Evacuation Center, the Slow Knitter Hurricane Evacuation Center. Oof. But you know, a lot of people in my my friends, I'm chattering now. Uh, my friends were without power until yesterday, which means they're out from Monday through Thursday. I met a woman yesterday who has been without power since Monday, and it was Thursday. Uh, Wednesday yesterday. And she's not pl that planning to have it back until today. And I saw like Pennsylvania light power truck go by, you know. I mean, they're coming from all over. Imagine how they're going down to Florida and um, helping out those people. I feel so bad. All those people. <sighs> God, I can't even imagine. And it's hot. It's not, it's steaming hot. Now, before Naomi and Brendan left here, they checked and they did have air conditioning. They did have power in their buildings. Thank goodness. Because they live in well, mid-rise buildings. Anyway. Um, I forgot to thank all of the, my returning viewers for coming back and checking it out again. Back in Atlanta. Um, thank you so much. And welcome to new viewers uh, that are checking me out for the first time. And will you please hit the subscribe button? That would be great. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, all right. Uh, happy knitting. Love you all. I have a lot more to tell you. I want to tell you about another podcast I found that sounds beautiful. And so I will tell you about her next time. I don't want to bore you too much. This has gone on too long. Um, but check her out. Her name is... Um, Betsy Quillen, and she's Quillen, Quill Pens Quips, and she signs during her entire podcast. It's beautiful because she's hard of hearing, so I, I'll tell you about it. Anyway, I reached out to her, and I was uh, really thrilled. Anyway, that's all I have for today, but thanks for stopping by, and I really, really do appreciate all of you. Have a great time, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks when I podcast next. All right, bye-bye.